another video. Now, in today's video, we have to work through my girlfriend's corset today because you may remember in a previous video where we you know, went out with the car, make sure everything was okay, and we found obviously there's a knock coming from the bottom ball joint and the truck rod end. Well, turns out it's not the truck rod end, turns out it's actually the inner tie rod. So that'll probably have to get fixed in the future. Um, it's not serious, but the thing is, I'm pretty sure I have some brand new um, ones lined up here somewhere, but I can't seem to find them. But also, we have brand new truck rods as well um, that'll probably go on with the new inner tie rods at some point. But the jobs for today is we've got two brand new wishbones. We've got an aircon radio to go on as well because we had a bit of an incident with a deer. <laughs> so yeah, we've got that to, do, to go on today as well. And we have a wee um, oil pressure switch to go on as well. Because you can pick them on eBay pretty cheap, so I just got it. I thought we just got it. Just put it on. So that's the plan. So let's get started. Right, here we are in the engine bay. Now, the reason I'm actually changing this is because these things are prone to leaking. Um, it doesn't tend to leak kind of through the middle. Um, I don't know if you can see there very well, but yeah, these things can leak. So, for all the price of them, it's just a cheap replacement. I think it's about £3.95 pence on eBay. And I see there's the old one there, and yeah, there's oil leaking around there. So, like, an, even though there's probably nothing wrong with this one, I mean, there's no, no harm in putting a brand new one on. I mean, they're so cheap. So, let's get that one done. Right, that's a nice new oil pressure switch now installed. So now that that's done, let's get started and get these wishbones now. I'm probably just gonna jack up one side and then just do one side at a time because obviously uh, the Alcus are currently holding up the Subaru because I've seen some work on it. So let's get started. Right, that's just jacked up, so we got a wee pinch bolt here, right there, we got obviously a nut and a bolt there, and there's another one right here, so let's get this off. Right, what an absolute fucking joke, right, it's pissing down rain, and finally got this bolt out, it was absolutely corroded to shit, so that's out anyway, uh, I'm probably going to try and uh, pry down this fucking, uh, get this body pinch bolt out the fucking hub. Then we'll crack on to obviously getting these bolts out here and obviously there. Shit job, especially in this weather, but you know, that's it. Car guy life. Yeah, you know, car guy life. That's what this channel's about, you know. So, let's crack on. Oh, and let me show you something else retarded, right? So for this bolt here, right, you've got a 70mm socket, right, which obviously, right, doesn't go on because it's too big. You've got an 18mm, right, which goes on, but sits loose. What the fuck? Right, that's our bolt out now. But what a fucking stupid design, right? There's a nut right on top of it. I mean, you think it'd be a cupped of nut where it's actually welded on, so you don't need to use a spanner, but no, 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 Vox will do it the shit way because they, they can't design cars worth a shit. But never mind, that's it off, so let's get this off. Oh. Yeah, this is miserable as fuck, right? I mean, honestly, like, I hate working cars in the rain, as you well know. Yeah, obviously, obviously corset seats are really badly designed cars. I mean, I don't know if you ever know, but if you're working on a Corsa B, right, which is one before the Corsa C, you'll see why the, this one is so rubbish. I mean, Corsa Bs and things like the older ones are so much easier to work on, right, than these things. But nonetheless, that's the switchbone off. Now, um, closer inspection, it's actually worse than I thought, so let's have a look. In closer inspection, right, this bush, right, looks absolutely wonker. I mean, if you can kind of see here, if I can zoom back a bit, you can cut... Oh, no, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm trying to hold my camera steady, like, but you can kind of see how this bush here, right, is at a slightly different angle to this one. So yeah, that's the old, new one, and that is the old one. So, the car should handle a little bit better with this one on, so yeah, that bulging is, you can kind of see there. 
absolutely had it. And that's a knocking noise we would have been hearing. But no, no, these ones, brand spanking new. So, let's get this bloody stuff on. Just before I crack on, I just noticed this as well, right? I mean, you can actually see the play in this bush. Like, like, I can actually move that by hand. Whereas this one, like, I can't, that's solid. I can barely move that with my hand. So, yeah, I'm actually quite happy we changed this, actually, because, I mean, I don't know how old this one is, but it must be pretty old. I mean, look at the state of it. So, yeah, as I was saying, I just wanted to show you that before we cracked on. So, well, with that being shown, let's go. Right, before I start, I'm probably going to give all these bolts a good clean up and things like that, make sure everything's clean for go by con. Just make, just doing this properly, so. Yeah, make sure all the pin, where it goes to the hub, right there. Make sure it's all clean as well. So, I guess all cleaned up. Then we can get to installing the new wishbone, so let's get cracking. Okay, we got a bit of problems there actually. Um, because these are cheap aftermarket um, wishbones, the bush was actually slightly too big to fit in here, like only like what point millimeter off. So I basically sanded down the top and bottom of the bush, and it slits in perfect. And don't worry, I double measured it with a, a special kind of measurement tool thing, so the size is perfect now, and it fits perfect. So there were no problems there. Just need a little bit of uh, adaption, shall we say? So not really there. Just need to pop it up there, and then put the ball joint in, and then we're good. So I apologise I'm not recording much, the, the rain is absolutely bucking it down, but put that bolt in, uh, it requires quite a lot of manoeuvring about to get all these holes lined up, it's a bit of a pain in the arse to be honest. But I'll see the bolt in, that's the uh, pinch bolt in as well, as you can see on camera, but that's in as well. Uh, I'll see where the ball joint goes through the knuckle, there's a little kind of slot where you put the bolt in. Now you make sure it's lined up with this hole, uh, you'll see it, I'll see when this thing's off you'll see the little slot I'm on about. And I'll see that needs to line up that hole so obviously the bolt can go through and locate the ball joint in place. So, that being said, let's get things back together again. That's one side done. I'm absolutely filthy, I'm soaking wet, but you know, this also channel's all about just crack on with stuff regardless. So, when I tidy up this, this side now, then I'm gonna move the car over a bit, then we'll crack on the other side. So let's get started. Right, I think we'll probably give the side a miss because obviously you can see, I think this one's obviously been replaced recently. I mean, also, so I know, I know I've got another one in the shed and I like to do things in pairs, but as you can see, this one's uh, definitely been replaced recently. Um, I posted this in my last video. So yeah, like I said, I think we'll give this one a miss. There's, I don't think there's any need to change this, but at least we've got another one in the shed in case we do need to replace this in the future. So that's all good. Obviously there's zero play in this side, so we're fine. So for now, I think we'll do is put the wheel back on, all that kind of stuff, and then we're gonna get this bumper off and change the aircon radiator. So. Let's get cracking. Actually, I think while we're here, right, it's probably a good time for a comparison. Now, you can see here, obviously, how poor condition this one is. Obviously, all this rust and stuff like that. But then, when you compare it to my Subaru, how clean she is. Oh, she's so pretty. <laughs> right, now we've got the car back on the ground again. We're going to get this bumper off. Now, I'm not. I don't, I'm going to see how far I can actually move it without actually taking it off completely. So, I think what we're going to do is obviously remove these bolts here. You've got one, two, and three. And then, obviously, there's obviously one thing's holding it on here. Obviously, because of that little incident we had, there's also a wee self kind of screw in there. So, but I'll say this is temporary because I'm hoping to get our bumper for this car at some point. It's not too bad, it's just got a wee crack here, but I'll probably get another bumper for it anyway. Probably an Armstrong one, so it looks a lot better as well. 
point SRI one, obviously with the honeycomb fog lights and grill things like that. So, but for now, uh, this will do. But anyway, so I'm trying to move this bumper and then see if we've got enough room to obviously get the radiator in. So, let's get cracking. Bumper kind of separated. Now it does look a bit rough, but like I said, this bumper does need replaced because it's all kind of stuff. You know, as you can see, it's all broken down here, obviously, when we when we uh, hit something. So, like I said, we got enough room here, brought enough room. Um, we'll be able to slip the radiator down here and obviously hook it in place and obviously plug in all the aircon bits and bobs. So, tell you what, we'll see how we got on. So, let's get cracking. Right, that's it kind of in place now. So, what I've got here is a little kind of, um, obviously, screw that always goes in, goes in on top of there, which you can see on camera. Yeah, there's a little screw on top of the radiator, obviously, goes onto there. And also, there are a couple of hooks, obviously, where the aircon radiator hooks onto the um, actual water radiator. It's the same with this side as well, um, as you can see very well. Yeah, there's a little kind of screw, which obviously goes in there. And obviously, down the back, there's a little hook as well for this to go onto. So, I'm trying to fumble about and get this hooked up. And obviously, you've got a little sensor here for the air conditioning, and there's obviously some pipes that go from I really doubt you can see on camera. Yeah, you can kind of see just down there, like kind of like down to the left hand side right here. So I'll see that'll bolt onto the uh, radiator. So that being said, let's get this done. Oh, right, we're nearly there. But I'm a pain in the arse because obviously like try to get all these things hooked up and all that and obviously get everything in place. Obviously it'd be a lot easier with the bumper off and crash bar, but I do things the hard way. So this is where we are so far. Nearly in place, as you can see. It's all actually hooked on at the bottom. I'll see where it hooks on. Same with that side as well. I don't know if you can see on camera. Uh, but yeah, just down on the side there, it's hooked on. So, I think the next thing I'm going to try and do is, obviously just plug in everything, try and get the actual aircon pipes on, which are obviously just down there. And then, let's get from there. So, let's get cracking. I'm not sure you can see on camera, but I'm a bit of a problem obviously getting this, um, I don't know if you can see very well, I'm obviously getting this, um, obviously these aircon bits together. Uh, I'll see this onto there. now. I probably won't put this on today because obviously there's a bolt missing from it as well, which must have got lost obviously on the impact. So I might just um, leave this for now, but I've got a plan, I'm going to maybe put some tie-ups from obviously around the whole thing, tighten the tie-ups up, and I might actually just pull it together, um, just until I can get a bolt. Um, but obviously I won't be using the aircon anytime soon because obviously it needs filled up and a lot. So but anyway, I'll try this for now and see how we got on. So luckily I found a bolt that actually fits, so I'm going to tighten that, the uh, a bolt up now for the uh, aircon pipes. And then we can obviously crack on with we'll the rest of the wiring and things like that. So let's get cracking. Right, eventually that's it on. What a joke that was. Like there's hardly any room up here, but and I hope that holds. I mean there shouldn't be any leaks from there, so that's job done for that one. Finally we're nearly done. Honestly, I'm sorry for a bit of a grumpy things got, but this has been a horrible job. Mainly because obviously the weather and the heat and the humidity, it's not really the best thing to be working in to be honest. And I'm hungry as well, so but I'd rather eat after I'm finished, so but we're nearly done. So the next thing is um obviously all the wiring plugged in, the uh, obviously the pipes uh, hooked up, um obviously it's mounted in place. We've got two more kind of bolt holes to put in where it actually touched onto the water radiator. So we're gonna do that now, bump her back on, then it's job done. So let's get cracking. Oh, right, we're finally done. Uh, just need to tie up now. That's the bumper back on. Um, I don't really film much because it's not kind of pointless because you've already seen it in the first part of the video. Um, but it was quite annoying just to get all the bumper back considering it's obviously not that intact. But yeah, everything's secure now. Play up with what we got done today, even though it was quite a bit of a pain in the arse to start off with. But anyway, I'll tidy up and we'll finish off the video. So, see you in a second. Right, we're very nearly finished now. Um, as, as I was obviously starting up the car up or on, I noticed there's like a tiny, tiny misfire. So I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the plugs out and just see how we look at them, uh, just to see the general condition and things like that. And if I think they don't look too good, I'll just buy a brand new set anyway because considering the car does quite high mileage and things, it wouldn't surprise me if they are a bit like weak. So we're going to look at the plugs. So let's get cracking.
Right, I think all the plugs look kind of okay, but I think just for um, obviously peace of mind I'm going to replace them. Because um, they do look, one of them's a bit, I think on two cylinders, the plugs look a little bit damp, so obviously it's running a bit rich. So I can only assume obviously, that the plugs aren't really providing a good spark. So like I said, it's only about £8 for four brand new plugs anyway, so we'll just replace them. So you'll probably see that in another video. But for now, we'll get it back together again, then we'll probably put an end to this video. So it's been okay, but let's get finished. Must be done for today. Absolutely knackered and filthy, so off to a shower I go. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm um, sorry if I was a bit crabby through all of it. It's just it's really horrible working in the humidity and the rain, things like that. It's been quite a bit hard going. It's a bit of a pain in the backside, obviously, with that wishbone not being the right kind of fitment. But obviously, we've got, we've got to work as always. Um, but yeah, it's been quite a day. Um, also, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you do, also make sure you to like. Also, if you're new, please subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me. So as always, I will see you in the next video.